Joining us today on the Daily Dose, you know, we wanted to bring someone in to talk about the NFL playoffs and to preview the games coming this weekend, some of the things going on right now in the sports world. But we also want to talk a little bit of sports history. We want to go back and discuss a few things going on in sports history that might be on our minds right now. So we bring back Mike from Castle Rock to talk about all of the things. Mike, welcome back to the Dose, first and foremost. Good to be back, man. I always love coming in and talking football with you. Well, you know, we've got a lot of things to get to today. The NFL playoffs, a little bit unpredictable, I guess. Some of the teams got through that we expected to get through. Some of the teams are gone. We're going to talk about a few of those. But we're going to start off with a little bit of sports news. And, Mike, we're going to start in a place that we start most all the time when you come on. And that is in women's college basketball. Mike, reigning University of Utah National Player of the Year, Caitlin Clark, was a little bit distraught because they lost a big game to Ohio State over the weekend. And a storm of fans came out to storm the floor in Columbus. There's probably 14 or 15 of them. Well, one of them collided with Caitlin Clark. She went down. She was immediately surrounded by, you know, safety personnel, making sure she was okay. She appeared to go back down in pain. Clark told reporters after the game that she just had the wind knocked out of her, but that it was kind of a scary situation that could have been worse. Okay, first off, they had already gone through and shake and, and done the handshaking line. So this wasn't like chaos, like we're being led to believe. Second, like I said, there were like 87 people in the arena. 20 of them ran down on the floor. Mike, did Caitlin Clark flop? Let's get this on the table. Did she flop? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if she's got uh, got that uh, LeBron nature, little flop nature in her or not. Um, <laughs> that's getting that's getting a little out of hand to me, right? I mean, did that game win a tournament? Did it did it did it win your conference? Did it did it really matter that much that you need to? You know, are you on a 30 game losing streak? And then to break that losing streak, you beat a ranked team. None of that. It's it's nonsense. I It's it's out of control. It, it needs to stop. Well, and we're seeing it in, you know, the major sports. We're seeing it in football. We're seeing it in basketball. And we're seeing it, like you said, for accomplishing nothing. For nothing. We saw Colorado run the field this year when they beat Colorado State, who was without a win when they beat them. We storm the floor for everything. Here's the key, though. As usual, it always comes back to money. If the schools would hire security, they wouldn't go out and run on the field. They wouldn't go out and run on the field. They don't want to hire security. They don't want to pay the money. So these things happen, and sometimes you are left with hubris when, you know, Caitlin Clark gets knocked to the floor by the storming fans. This is one girl that kind of bumped into her, and she threw her arms out and fell down. So, yeah, you're right. I think they do need to, to get rid of this. You know, for years in the SEC, it was, I think, a $50,000 fine if you storm the field. Wow. I mean, all you got to do is bring that back, and suddenly you have a little incentive to maybe not do that anymore. Mike, we did have some news this week. It looks like the Tennessee Titans are going to hire Brian Callahan as their new head coach, that was the Cincinnati Bengals offensive coordinator. Uh, I think that's probably a decent hire. The Titans just pulling the plug on, on their current regime surprised me a little bit, but I, I don't suppose that that's a bad hire. Mike, I think the biggest surprise to me, well, there's two. One is that the Dallas Cowboys decided to stand pat. Mike McCarthy is coming back after that playoff loss to the Green Bay Packers in the wild card round. And honestly, I thought they're going to finally make a move. Like they have to make a move. You got blown out at home. You're going to have to do something. But Jerry Jones said he would not do that. He didn't want to judge his coach based off the final game of the season. This is insane, right? Like this is crazy. We're all happy about it, but this is crazy, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. The amount of pressure he's going to be under next year. It's the last oh. year of his contract. Yes. So uh, I think he half expected to be fired. I do too. Um, uh, and 
you know, were there going to be sweeping changes? You know, were there there's rumors that they interviewed Bill Belichick and he laughed and said no. And, you know, and maybe that's why they decided to keep. I, I don't know what the whole deal is, but boy, the pressure he's going to be under next year and Dak and everybody. It's it is incredible it's 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 gonna be a fun train wreck to, wreck to watch next year in the playoffs again yeah it is because it doesn't seem like they can get over that hump it doesn't seem like it ever changes uh mike mccarthy seems to have kind of all the pieces there together and yet in the biggest moments they collapse and they fall apart and we've seen it happen again and again and you know my biggest takeaway on that was like okay you didn't lose to san francisco you didn't <laughs> You lost to what a seven seed at home in the wild card round. It really shocked me they didn't do anything. I mean, I'm I love it. I'm thrilled. I root for stories anymore. Obviously, my own my own team selfishly, but I root for stories, and that's great because I can't wait to watch Dallas all next year and how horrible they're gonna be. And you know, the expectations I, I feel like they've always bit that team a little bit. They're gonna be way worse next year. You brought up a really good point, though, because you brought up Bill Belichick. Mike, what is Belichick doing? It doesn't sound like he's doing anything. What's going on with Belichick? I, I don't know. I, I To be honest with you, he might just be able to sit back and, and let bidding wars go up, right? I mean, there's, yeah. a, there's rumors of Atlanta. What it sounds uh, like, yeah. With him, right? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, he's... He's way up there in age. Uh, is he is he that vain enough? Yes, uh, yeah. to go a couple more seasons so he can uh, end up being number one in all time wins. I I don't know what it is. Um, it's it's uh, going to be interesting to see. It's going to yet again another interesting off season in the playoff or in the in the NFL this year. Or so, if you were the Buffalo Bills, we're going to talk about them here in just a few minutes. Do you go to Belichick and say, "Hey, come fix this"? Maybe um, if you've got a good GM in hand, because he has clearly shown he is awful. The GM right. Belichick has screwed the, the coach Belichick. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, with he, he is very good at maximum at two things. One, taking away the opponent's best weapon. Sure. And two, maximizing his own weapons. That's right. And with the exception of the team that uh, went undefeated and then lost in the Super Bowl, where they had everybody in the world of the you know best offense there, um, I think he would walk into a situation where he's got possibly the most talent he would have ever had. Yeah. So, um, do you do it? Maybe I don't. I don't know if it's something he would he would take. I don't know. I, I the guy's so hard to read. He's so <laughs> it, hard to read. It it, 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 it he could. Go in the uh, you know Mr. Personality and and be calling games for ESPN for all I know I don't I don't know it 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 I he may take a year off and sit on a boat it it, it makes no sense I don't well, I don't know what he thinks. and it's funny because when you talk to people that know him they're like if you get him outside of that mode he is highly entertaining he's a very good speaker tells great stories. We don't get that side, but I've heard that from multiple people. I had the uh, the former New England Patriots team doctor on, on the dose, and he was like, dude, behind closed doors, Bill Belichick is a riot. He's so friendly. He's so nice. He's a like a wealth, an encyclopedia of, of football history. We don't get that side. And I get it because if I'm him, I guess I don't give that side either. But to us, he's just this stodgy, old, grumpy – yeah, I don't know. You you think he would he may consider going up to the booth? I think that's what Nick Saban's going to do, and I think he's going to be very good at it. Mike, I got one more story I want to talk to you about, and there hasn't been a whole lot made of this, but I wanted to get your take on this. We just recently found out that apparently Indianapolis Colts owner Jim Irsay was found during the holidays in his home, passed out, blue from some sort of thing he took, some sort of self-medication. Now, Mike, we know that Ursay has had problems in the past. He's been in and out of rehab in the past. Does the NFL need to take a look at this guy as an owner? You might have to. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, there there have been some pretty shady owners, right? It took a while to get Snyder out of there. Um, yeah. 
it seems like the NBA did, might might do a little bit better job of of getting the bad seeds out, but they'll get involved for sure. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I don't know what exactly what their the scope of their power is, right? Um, right. It, it, to be able to do something. I mean, they can maybe make a recommendation or or something like that, but I don't know. If you're if you're an owner, uh. Of, of a football team that it, it, you're just literally printing money. Yes, you are. Wh- why would you ever sell? Right. So I, I don't know if, if that, I don't know if that is something that he can be forced out of. Uh, I, I mean, it, it was, don't know all the details of the, the commander's deal, but it did seem like the NFL did play a heavy hand and get yeah. Snyder to finally sell. Well, and it's funny because I hear the sports media world and everyone says, Hey, why are there different owners for the, or different rules for the owner than there are for the player or for the coach because he's the owner. That's I know we have to act like, yeah, I don't know why that, cause he has the money. That's why. So yeah, you, you bring up a good point. There's a lot of things we might like to do. Doesn't mean you can do them when, the, when rich people have money, they get to do a lot more stuff than other people have. And the difference between coaches and players and owners is again, like rock said, the difference between being rich and being wealthy. And the wealthy guys get to make the rules and everyone else gets to follow them. I know everyone acts baffled by it, but that's why that's why it is what it is. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. And, and, and another thing too is, you know, may, maybe send a strong message or something like that short of making him s- sell the team because you've also got to look at the angle of, well, why didn't they give him another chance? Sure. You know, why, why didn't they let him go to rehab? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you want to do that for a player? Wouldn't you want to give him support or something? You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't know. It's again, another, another interesting site. Like you said, it it's not, you know, headline news right now, but that's kind of a big story. So. Well, you would think so. And especially back in Indy, don't you have to be getting a little nervous? Like, okay, what is this guy doing? He is the owner. If something does happen to him, I don't know. Are the Colts headed for <laughs> probate? I don't know how that works <laughs> because yeah, that well, seems I, like I, that seems like that could get ugly real fast. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't wish what happened to us when our owner passed away. Uh, no, a trust for a while. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Well, maybe a few teams, but yeah, there's a couple. Um, uh, yeah, it it was just not an ideal situation. So no, no not at all. To happen. Well, speaking of the NFL, Mike, let's uh, let's jump into those to those games that we just saw in the divisional round. The NFL completes that divisional round. They are now had, headed to the uh, conference championships this weekend. We're going to preview those in just a minute. But let's take a look at each of the games that did take place over the weekend because the Baltimore Ravens beat the Houston Texans at home 34 to 10. You know, Houston definitely overachieved this year. But you could also see right as it was getting close to half, they didn't have anything for the Ravens. The Texans made way too many mistakes. They never had an answer for Ravens quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Jackson passed for two touchdowns, but where he really killed him was he ran for a hundred yards and two more touchdowns. And I worry a little bit about Lamar needing some more receiving help, but that defense is really, really good. And it just didn't look like Houston was able to stay in the race. Yeah, that was a tough one. Great story with Houston this mm-hmm. year. I mean, what, three wins last year, uh, new rookie quarterback, new rookie head coach, um, winning a home playoff game the week yeah. before. Um, you know, most people did not expect them to make it to 500, much less right. the second one of the playoffs, right? Uh, they, they had a wealth of picks this year. They hit on a lot of them. I think they got a few more next year. They're well under the salary cap. That that's a team to look out for. I don't know if they're going to recede a little bit this year because they won't be sneaking up on anybody. But yeah, yeah they 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 were rewarded with their uh, uh, home playoff win by running into a buzzsaw, basically. So um, no no surprise that's the way that game ended up. Yeah, and that Baltimore defense, it feels like they might be just a little under the radar. A lot of people talking about some other defenses this year, talking about the Clevelands, talking about San Francisco, and I get it. That Baltimore defense is sneaky, and they're really, really good. We saw that on Saturday because they didn't let C.J. Stroud do much of anything all day. Baltimore's very, very good. We all wondered what's going to happen 
if the San Francisco 49ers struggle with their quarterback, well, we almost found out on Saturday. The Niners scrape out a 24 to 21 win over the Green Bay Packers. And Purdy, I'll be honest, looked exactly like the quarterback I thought he would be when he got drafted with the last pick. He couldn't hit anything. He couldn't make a pass. He was so off. The Niners trailed for a good part of that game, but Christian McCaffrey would not go away. The Niners defense came up with stops when they had to have them. But Mike, I have to issue one word of caution. After the game, I heard Niners fans saying things like, just like Joe Montana, Purdy was clutch when he had to be. Can we stop? There, there was nothing Montana-ish about what Brock Purdy did. I don't know if the people saying that had like a TBI. I don't know what's going on. But Purdy looked horrible, and his supporting cast bailed him out. That's not what Joe Montana did. Joe Montana was great. Also, Jordan Love's final play reminded me of Brett Favre. Just want to throw that out there. But what did you think of that San Francisco Green Bay game on Saturday night? Yeah, uh, it's a combination of two things, I think. One, um, let's see. Similar to Houston, I think most people didn't have Green Bay doing much at all this year. Yeah, right? they were good. First, first year with uh, uh, Jordan Love at the helm, and it, first part of the year, he looked lost. Um, I think in the last six weeks, he was the number one rated quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. They're the youngest team in the NFL. Uh, the wide receivers were catching on. They had so much momentum going in those playoffs. They... I don't know if they caught San Francisco by surprise. I don't think so. Uh, with that coaching staff, I think you got to be prepared for anyway. But they may have exposed them a little bit. So good, uh, I, I, good game. I, I it was it was yeah. uh, a very entertaining game. Well, and, of these, right, right, because we haven't had great games. Well, and and the weather I would assume had a little bit to do with that. You know, Purdy. I, I hate to read too much into it. Purdy does have small hands. I wonder if he was struggling to grip that ball. He was so off. Yeah. You and I were texting during the game like he can't hit an open receiver right now. He yeah. had open receivers. He couldn't yeah. hit them. Yeah, that might scare me a little bit. I don't know if it if it scares me enough to be off of San Francisco. That scared me a little bit because you're just going to have better and better teams as this goes along. You better hope you have good weather. I'll say that. We move on to Sunday where the Detroit Lions held on to win their second playoff game this season at home. They came up with clutch turnovers when they needed them. And the Detroit offense, you know, they took some pressure off of Jared Goff because they ran the ball pretty effectively. That makes them a much, much different team. That helped Goff because they had a way more efficient game. Maybe not big numbers, but good numbers. Uh, Mike, here's a question I have for you. I'm hoping you can help me. Late in the game, Tampa scores. They make the score 31 to 23. Extra point pending. Kick the extra point. You're down a touchdown. They instead elected to go for two. I, I don't get it. They didn't, they didn't convert it. They're then down by eight. Why did they go for two? I know they say follow the book, but who wrote this book? Whoever wrote this book's an idiot. I don't know what book that was. Who wrote that book? That I book, don't either. I don't get it. Nowhere, nowhere in that book does it say go for two when when you could go for the one and, and keep your you know seven point margin and say attack. That, that makes understand. totally no sense. None, none, none. If you're gonna if you're going to shock everybody and say you know what here's our shot we're gonna go for the win you do that on the next touchdown right right where right you tie and go to overtime or win it and, and not yeah. go to overtime that's when you do that 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 made no sense I, there were there were a couple couple calls uh yeah. on the Tampa Bay side that made no sense uh not calling that last time out odd. um very they, odd some very strange uh decisions there uh, on Tampa Bay's part um but uh, boy they were game though uh yeah they he were they Baker was balling uh he he made himself uh, uh 30 40 ish million yeah. dollar contract coming next year so good for him um I, I he he definitely showed out well you know the biggest problem that Baker Mayfield has is one that is not self-inflicted he shouldn't have been drafted number one and he was Right. And 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 all that came with it. He looked pretty good this year, though, in a healthy, good situation. Hey, it's almost like the kid can play quarterback, yep. but he hasn't been in that situation. And 
the primary reason for that is because he was drafted into a bad situation and shouldn't have been. Probably should have been a a first round pick maybe, but later. Then the pressure wouldn't have been there. We ruin these guys and then we wonder why they're ruined. Yeah, that, that's a big problem with, uh, and we're going to see it again this year, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, easily three in the first round. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's four or five. Yep. And it, it wouldn't shock me if there's six. And there's literally three first round talents in the quarterback pool this year. So, right. um, but it's, it's not going to fall that way. Um, no way. It never does. Definitely, definitely overdrafted. Um, I think <laughs> the, the first round uh, uh, contracts have a bit to do with it there. Yeah. Um, but sure. you know, if, if, if you're going to just ruin the guy, cause you're drafting him too early and into a situation with that many expectations, the contract, is irrelevant so right well and again no one wants to tell these rich guys that they're they're stupid but they make a lot of stupid choices every year at the nfl draft the detroit lions are going to the nfc championship mike love it we never we never thought we'd see the day yep i mean you and i were playing uh, tecmo bowl back back in the in the day and we were trying to get them to a super bowl and you could barely do it in tech mobile, but, but yep. that was the only way you could do it. Cause you sure weren't going to do it in real life. That disaster of franchise, they finally have something to feel really good about. And I'm still shocked by it. I still can't hardly believe it. I, I love it. I, 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 and I think most real football fans across the country are really behind them. Um, oh yeah. I love the story. Love, I the do coach. Too. love the reclamation project with golf. Absolutely. Boy, talk about good young talent too. This, this, it's a fun team. I, I love the story. Really, really fun, and that city is going to be going crazy this next weekend. I know the game's on the road, but they are going to be – everybody's going to be glued to that. Just like, what if? What if Detroit went to their first Super Bowl ever? Yep. I, I can't get my head around it that they're this far, let alone if they went any further. Finally, Sunday evening, we got probably the best playoff game that we have seen this postseason – the game went back and forth all night. It was really, really fun. There were eight lead changes with the Kansas City Chiefs beating the Buffalo Bills 27-24. to 24. And, of course, late in the game, the Bills drove into Chiefs territory into field goal range. And I know the big story is that Bills kicker Tyler Bass missed a 44-yard field goal. Wide right, no less. I mean, just to add insult to injury. But... Mike, you and I talked. If he makes it, there were still almost two minutes left. Mahomes was going to win that game in over or in regulation, wasn't he? All he needed was a field goal. Yes. You, you don't even return the kickoff. You get on the twenty-five. You give him. I think they still had timeouts left. One or two timeouts. I think, I think they had two or three timeouts. Uh, yeah. And 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 I'm sorry. It's just we saw it with what thirteen seconds left two years ago. So. Yep. Uh, you, you give him, you know, 10 times that much, uh, with a couple timeouts, he can go get a field goal. It, Easy. Uh, yeah. It, we, we were shocked and, and dismayed. Of course, we're, you know, through our local rooting interests yeah. going against Kansas City. Of course. Uh, but I, I think we, we both came to the conclusion that, uh, you know what, if you made matter. it, I don't think it would have mattered anyway. So, uh, good game. And, you know, another good game and he keeps getting away with it. But Reed made a couple weird. Yeah, I don't get it. Getting away with it though. One of the there there were a couple times this year that it bit him, right? And it yeah. doesn't matter. We're in the championship game, but yeah, I did the 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 cutesy calls that he does every yep. now and then. It bit him, so uh, it, it's going to be you cannot do that next week. No, no, and we're going to talk about that. But that defense is different. That isn't this Bills defense. That Bills defense is pretty banged up. Speaking of which, and we we know him well, but where was Von Miller? Did we put out an Amber Alert on him? I didn't see him the whole game really do anything. I saw him in the game. I didn't see him do much. I think he made a tackle. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Remember when he was just a game wrecker? Yeah. I mean, over. he's past his prime, right? Um, it's, but difference with him past his prime and a lot of other and it, okay he is a hall of famer right yeah but a lot of other hall of famers that are past our prime you're going to get 60 to 70 percent of them for 80 percent of the game 
but there's a handful of plays that you go, oh, yeah. that's the guy I remember. Yeah. I'm not seeing that with Vaughn. I, mm-hmm. I, I just, I'm not seeing it. Nope. No, and and it's too bad. And and then, you know, like, like we talked about, you, you can blame the kicker, whatever. I think Mahomes would have won it. What they really needed, they really needed Josh Allen to milk that clock and go get seven and end that thing and yep. say, we're going to put this all to bed. I'm taking us. We're going to win this game and we're moving on. And he couldn't do it. And and I'm just starting to feel, hey, that team is aging. They're way over the salary cap. The Bills are in some trouble. It feels like that window might be closing. It might be shut already. That was – that. I don't know if he's ever going to get a better scenario right. to prove that he is one of the top two or three quarterbacks in the NFL, yes. right? You're at home. You – have the opportunity to lead your team. You've got plenty of time. There's there's no reason to hurry or, or panic. He missed some wide open guys. Yeah, he did. Je- he just didn't get it done. And the all time greats get it done. So uh, he's a very very good quarterback. Um, I just he he needed to make the next step this last weekend, and he didn't do it. No, he didn't. And Mahomes does it again. And I know it was the first, you know, road playoff game in Mahomes' career, but Mahomes comes through and he needs to. And Allen had the chance and, and couldn't do anything with it. I know we keep being told, you know, he's the next Elway. He, you got to win some games. You got to win some postseason games. Right. Right. And, and, okay. Physically, you know, uh, is there a similarity? Sure. Between English, yeah. But Elway did more with less than he's doing with more, if, yeah. if that makes sense. He's got so much more talent around him than Elway sure ever had until Shanahan came to town. So, right. um, yeah, it, it, he, he does not deserve that comparison yet. Well, and Diggs is gone, isn't he? I mean, Diggs is going to be gone. He looks like he's hates it there. I, I, mean, I don't know. The Bills are going to have some some questions. Yep. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one for sure. <laughs> the drama of the offseason, of course. Of course. So, Mike, in the last, what, two to three weeks, we have seen two of the greatest coaches in the history of college football and the NFL either retire, as Nick Saban did, or be asked to go do something else in the case of Bill Belichick and even with the case of Pete Carroll. And I know uh, Pete Carroll probably isn't in that conversation for greatest ever, but he is one of just three guys to win both the college football national championship and a Super Bowl. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the greatest coaches ever. And there are so many things to consider when we look at this, because I personally, I think it's almost impossible to compare errors. And I know we love to do it in sports, but it's so hard because the only way I can truly do it is to put both guys in both eras. So uh, like an example, I believe personally, Sugar Ray Robinson, a guy who fought 200 fights in his career would do pretty well in today's era. He gets the best training. He gets the best nutrition. He only fights what twice a year. Yeah. Sugar Ray is going to be very good. However, if I take Floyd Mayweather and I say, okay, you're going to wear cardboard boxes for shoes and uh, you're training, you got to chase a chicken and you're going to have to fight 200 fights. I don't know if Floyd's going to make it. And I think there's a lot of times when we look at coaches, we look at quarterbacks and we compare eras, we kind of lose some of that. And like, I, I look at this and I, I think Nick Saban, he's had to coach through scholarship limits. 120 some D1 schools, million dollar budgets. Now he has to deal with the NIL transfer portal. I think he'd be pretty good back in the day when you could stockpile players for four or five years. Also, probably didn't have to coach against any black kids. I mean, let's throw it all out there because that's part of it too. So as we go through these coaches today, I want to kind of keep errors in mind. It makes it very, very difficult to compare. But, Mike, I have a list of, like, I don't know, four or five greatest college football coaches ever. I don't know how many you have on your list, but who do you want to throw out? Who do you want to nominate for one of your greatest college football coaches ever? 
Well, I mean, obviously, you got to start with who we're just talking about. Yeah. He put Saban up there, right? I mean, he sixth all time in in wins. Yes. Um, but again, it's it's a it's a newer era, right? To where you just mentioned, there's hundred and whatever other teams out there that that are playing the same division of, of football, right? So um, it's it's quite a bit more difficult but uh you know uh winning percentage to me that's a big deal right sure uh you can you can hang on and coach for 30 years and just rack up you know eight wins a a season and be in the yeah. top five all the time but how many did you lose so he he did finish number one in winning percentage so yes um 19 bowl games and seven national championships Ooh. To me, that's that. that's hard to beat, right? Yes. Um, and, and I I think I agree with what you're saying. He I think he would have done well in any era. Um, and the changing of the guard with this nil deal is is probably what chased him out. So it has to be. And I don't blame him. I mean, no, I don't either. That that's got to be reeled in a little bit, doesn't it? A in lot. The portal. Yes. Oh, it's just, it's a mess. It's a mess. So. Imagine if NFL free agency began the week of playoffs starting. Yes. That's literally what college football does. That's how stupid That's college football is. the bowl season is garbage. It's a disaster. Bro. Yes, they have to rein that in. They have to fix it. It's but imagine if you're Nick Saban, you're out recruiting 15, 16-year-olds, right? And you finally talk this kid into signing on the dotted line. How long do you have him for? A few months? And then he can go sign somewhere else on another dotted line. So right. now, not only do I have to recruit him, I've got to keep him. I've got to recruit mom and dad who think they're, what, agents now? It's horrible. It's a mess. And it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. But they need to rein some of this in because it's, it's not good for the kids. I know right. we're saying it is. Trust me, 18-year-old kids making these kind of decisions, probably not best for the kids whatsoever no. yeah nick saban nick saban uh definitely belongs on that list i'm gonna take an easy way out i'm gonna go with the guy that had the most wins although he does have a, a very very good percentage as well and that is joe paterno 409 wins won two national titles did it over decades and decades and decades but don't forget joe pa also did coach five undefeated teams that did win their bowl game in the modern era Maybe they're getting a chance to play for title. And in those days, they didn't. We all remember what happened at the end of Paterno's era. That doesn't completely wipe the slate clean that he was a really, really good football coach and maybe not such a good guy in uh, in hiring a defensive coordinator. But Joe Paterno, yeah, he's one of the greatest college football coaches ever. I don't think there's oh, any absolutely e easily. And he he's an example though. Like I was saying, he could coach for, you know, a hundred years or oh, whatever, yeah. to rack up the wins, but he still did it with a strong winning percentage. Yes. His percentage yeah. is actually crazy for that time. Yes. For yes. the amount of time um, I should say. He, yeah. I mean, he's a guy that you could tell loved his players and they loved him. Yes. Um. And yeah. The, the easy, easy on the all time list. That's, that's, that's an easy one. All right. Who you got next? Uh, old school, right? Uh, sure. One of the originals, Bear Bryant. Bear Bryant, yeah. You know, uh, six-time national champion. Yep. Uh, uh, one is one is won the SEC fourteen times, I think. Um, you know, just just really set the standard for major Division one college football back in the day. So, um, that's he's he's easily up there in the conversation. Well, and. One and one and one. The greatest line I've ever heard it was spoken about uh, Bear Bryant as in terms of coaches. They said he could take his and beat yours, or he could take yours and beat his. That kind of says that, all oh, Bear Bryant was a really, really good football coach. And I don't think he gets nearly enough credit for coaching up a guy that probably shouldn't have even been a college athlete, but Mike Forrest Gump was no joke. I'm going to throw out Eddie Robinson retired run. he could run eddie robinson retired with a 408 win are you kidding me 408 165 and 15 he had nine black college national titles 17 swap titles 
Eddie Robinson is one of those guys. Again, I think he could. You put him on that team, he's gonna out coach them. Put him on that team, he's gonna out coach them too. He's just that guy. Eddie Robinson could coach anywhere. That's where he ended up. But I think Eddie Robinson could coach anywhere, anytime. Yep, right. I had I had him too. You know, and he doesn't get a lot of pub, but obviously because he isn't in a major program or whatever. Right, but right. I, you know what, with with how long he was there and and how well he did it, he's he's got to be in the mention. So, and and you brought up a really good point, and and I know it kind of gets lost. Winning percentage and his players loved him. That is huge to me. Those those always rate really, really high in my book. Yeah, for that reason alone, Eddie Robinson definitely belongs on the list. Got any more? Are you out? Uh, you know, it, 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 whether they're in the, the very top, top tier or it, maybe the, the, the 1A category, it, Bobby Bowden. Sure, you know, um, absolutely. And uh, don't forget, Bobby did it at West Virginia, too. That's not always the easiest place to win. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Tom Osborne, boy, Nebraska was a. Yeah, uh, he had a powerhouse there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, R- different ruled era. The big eight, ruled the Big Eight and the Big Twelve for quite a while. So yes, he did. A um, couple honor- honorable mentions there. Sure, sure. Yeah, you could throw in guys like Bo and Buckler, and there there are a few other guys like that. Uh, I think, like you said, I think it's kind of that one, and then kind of that one A, that next rung. But yeah, there's some very, very good ones. Okay, Mike, but now we're going to get more serious. Because now we're going to go over to the NFL and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to throw out our nominations for greatest coach of all time. And I'm going to be honest, I've got more guys. I've got more guys on the NFL side. I've got a few more because I think, I think the big, the big winning coaches in college, they kind of separate themselves. NFL. I don't know. There's a few guys that might not be highest in all time wins that I'm like, no, but they're a really, really good coach. Mike, if you were nominating your first NFL greatest coach ever, who are you putting out there? We're not saying necessarily number one, right? Just in the running? In the running. Your nomination. Don Shula. Yep. Number one all-time wins. Um, way up there in uh, uh, winning percentage. Way up uh, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, two, two, two Super Bowl wins. It's a shame he couldn't get uh, Dan Marino up into one mm. but uh, uh the 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 sheer longevity and uh everything about him uh he sets the standard yep well and he and he took the colts to a super bowl didn't get it done but people kind of forget don shula took two different franchises of the super bowls very very impressive 347 total career wins only guy in history to finish the season and say we didn't lose once Don Shula absolutely belongs on the list. I'll nominate him. I'm struggling a little bit with him, but again, I think GM screwed him as coach. Bill Belichick, I mean, 17 division titles, 13 appearances in the AFC Championship game. He has appeared in nine Super Bowls. He's won six of them. Overall, he's won eight total, most ever in NFL history. Uh, I struggle a little bit because of how he's done recently. I struggle a lot because of the cheating things that are out there. And the GM Belichick really, really did not do justice to his coach. And that hurt him as well. But he's obviously in the conversation. It has to be, right? Yeah. The, the sheer numbers that you mentioned basically stand alone, right? I mean, sure. I don't know if anybody's ever going to to match those numbers. Um, but like you mentioned, and, and here's the thing, and why I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the DB that knocked out Drew Bledsoe. But if that didn't happen, does Bill Belichick have a Hall of Fame career? Excellent, does he? excellent question. No, I, I don't. I don't think he does. Is he above average coach? Absolutely. He hit the lottery uh, with Tom Brady. Uh, you know, his overall overall his career, he had nearly a sixty six percent winning percentage. Yeah, that's overall. Without Brady, 45. And yet, That's a he 20% had... 20% drop-off. Sure. He had won two as a coordinator. And those first probably two with Brady, Brady wasn't Brady yet. That first one against the Rams, Brady wasn't Brady. 
everyone at the end of that game, even John Madden was like, well, you better lay on it because this kid might turn it over. Like, you, don't go do this. We didn't know who Brady was. So I'll give – I'll cut Belichick a little slack on those because he kind of made he made Brady a little bit too. But, yes, winning percentage with and without, very, very different. Um, and, I mean, it's, you know, Shanahan without Elway, very, very different. Did they suddenly get dumb, though? No, they suddenly didn't have as good players. And that's always right. going to hurt. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to throw out a guy. I'm going to take heat for it. But I'm going to throw it out anyways, because he only has 154 wins. Only has nine playoff appearances. Four NFC Championship titles. Three Super Bowl wins. But Joe Gibbs won three Super Bowls with three quarterbacks and none of them are Hall of Famers. I don't even know that they were that good. Joe Theismann, uh, Doug Williams, and Mark Rippon. Well, Joe Gibbs won Super Bowls with those guys. Yep, That's pretty dang impressive. We, we just talked about, you know, with and without Brady. Uh, Joe Gibbs didn't seem to care. He just won. Yep. And, and that to me is a testament of, of possibly even better coaching. Right. I mean, because Very you possibly. know what your limitations are. Yep. Uh, now I will say this, those were all during the, the ridiculous dominating run by the NFC. Sure. Uh, so the Super Bowls weren't as difficult, but it, it, as we all remember in the nineties, the NFC championship game was the Super Bowl. Was the Super Bowl. And yeah. he won four of them. So, yeah. um, yeah, he he is. Uh, I have no problem. Again, he doesn't have the gaudy numbers, the yeah. gaudy winning percentage. He doesn't even have two hundred victories. Uh, you know, uh, like a lot of these other guys do. But yeah, you you nailed that one on the head. That that was a that was a very good choice. Well, and you know, you bring up some some good points about the NFC at that time because remember they had to get through. Uh, you know the the giants and the and the cowboys and the bears and and even the rams you know they had those dickerson rams and the niners and those are some good good teams that was stacked on that side the fact that gibbs was able to win three of them with basically no names and a guy named timmy smith okay you know mike we're, we're gonna move on we're gonna move on who do you have next <laughs> uh you know another one that i don't think a lot of people will get in in currently at least I mean, I did bring up Shula a little bit, but we're ignoring the old school guys, right? But, oh, yeah. Um, his coaching record is fantastic. But the uh, you hear this uh, uh, a lot on, on, on the broadcast a lot. His coaching tree oh. is incredible. Bill Walsh. Yep, absolutely. What he did in the 80s and the coaching tree that he spawned and has more has spawned more. I mean, it's grown it and you know the 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 roots that come from him yeah. are, are incredible. Um he Hall of Famer, well deserved, you know, three-time champion, and kind of unlike the the Redskin teams that you were mentioning, when they went to the Super Bowls, they were on cruise control. Oh yeah. It, it was it was it wasn't even a game, right? So the, his offense, offensive, uh, uh, you know, ingenuity mm -hmm. is like another. He literally changed the NFL in the 80s. So Yes, he did. I, I like Bill Walsh up there. I do too. And, and, you know, we talked about winning percentage. 61% doesn't sound great, but people don't realize how bad the Niners were when he took over. That was a franchise that was winning two or three games a year. For him to turn them into what they even are now, that isn't who they were. The Niners were garbage. They were horrible. And he literally took that job because he kind of got screwed by his former boss in Cincinnati, Paul Brown, who I will add to the list. Paul Brown was an innovator. He's the guy who basically kind of made Bill Walsh because that's, you know, Walsh was one of his assistants. But Brown, co-founder, and, and with the Browns, who... I mean, that's why they're named the Cleveland Browns. And then he also, you know, helped found the uh, the Cincinnati Bengals as well. Won 213 games, didn't have the winning percentage because he did it forever and ever and ever. But he won seven titles. Pretty impressive there. 
uh, coaching career lasted 25 years. People don't realize this. Paul Brown actually, before he went to the NFL, went to Ohio State and won their first national championship ever. But Paul Brown was really, really good. But he had a personal issue with Bill Walsh. So Walsh didn't get the job in Cincinnati like he thought he should have. He went to San Francisco. Oh, and by the way, who did they play in the Super Bowl? Twice. Yeah. <laughs> sweet, sweet vengeance for Bill Walsh yeah. against yeah. Paul Brown. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. But, uh, a little bit of extra motivation there. Oh, had to be. Can you even imagine? He had to be looking. We play who? Oh, <laughs> we're going to make sure we win this game. Yeah. Yep. I'll put, I'll put a uh, Walsh on there. I'll put Brown on there. Who else you got, Mike? I, uh, you know, you'd be, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention Hallis, right? I mean, yeah. my guy, guy coached for 40 years. Yep. Um, uh, six NFL championships, obviously really predates the Super Bowl, but, um, won twice twice as many times as he lost and, and maintained that for 40 years. Now, you know, the NFL was different back then, right? Very, uh, not very. nearly as many teams, not as much talent. Uh it, it was it was easier per se to to have a dynasty, but um uh, he he definitely uh, should be uh, you know, mentioned on the list there. Sure, sure. Yeah, Hallis belongs. I'm going to throw another guy out there, Chuck Knoll. Chuck Knoll won 193 games, went to seven conference title games, won four Super Bowls, undefeated in the Super Bowl. Also, Kind of gets lost because we talked about Belichick, the GM. Chuck Knoll may have had the greatest draft class ever in yep. 1974. Lynn Swan, Jack Lambert, John Stallworth, and Mike Webster won draft class. That's incredible. Chuck Knoll belongs on the list. That'll, ne that'll never be duplicated. Ever. How do, you, how do you get four Hall of Famers in one draft? I mean, come on. Um, Unbelievable. Another another good one for lo longevity that – the winning percentage isn't quite there, but I got, I think he won 13 division titles. Uh, the hat, right. You got yeah. to a little, get a little love to Tom Landry. Um, sure. You know, he, he, the game did pass him by towards the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, but boy, in the sixties and, and mid, mid seventies, wasn't much better. Well, and, and we talked a little bit about, you know, Paul Brown and Bill Walsh and guys that were innovators. Tom Landry was an innovator. You know, he puts in that four through defense, ends up being that flex defense, the doomsday defense, puts in shotgun stuff. It has the guy like Roger Staubach that's perfect to run it. Yeah, Tom Landry was very, very good. 270 wins. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'll throw out yeah. Vince Lombardi. Didn't do oh, it yeah. for as long, but 96 wins and a winning percentage of nearly 75%. That's insane. Five titles in seven years. Plus, he did win two, two Super Bowls. Vince Lombardi definitely belongs on the list. Mike, I've got one more guy I'm going to put on there, but do you have anyone else? You know, you uh, Parcells really yes. good. You know who's That's it. Up, you took my guy. You? Okay. You know who's creeping up? Andy Reid. Andy Reid. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Creeping up the scale and creeping up the wins list. Well, yes, for, for sure. Peg, but yeah, he is definitely creeping up the list. Of well, and, and you know, I was going to talk about, about Bar Parcells. Parcells took four teams to the NFL playoffs. Andy Reid's taken two teams, again, two Super Bowls. Very, very impressive. If you can do it in more than one city, I don't know why. It just gives you a little more credibility, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it absolutely does. I mean... It just means it wasn't you weren't a one trick pony and it, and it wasn't a, a, a flash in the pan, right? So um, that that going back to to Belichick, will, will he have the incentive to try to do that at another team? Yeah, you know, yeah. clearly he didn't. He was he was, he was a bust in Cleveland, but um, yeah, it, it'll it'll be interesting to see to see what he does. But yeah, Parcells um, and, and Reed uh, with, yeah. with with what they've done in multiple locations. Hey, I'll say this. If Belichick goes and wins in Atlanta. Yes. Agreed. Because Atlanta, West. yes. Because Atlanta's a, a a dump. I mean, they've never won anything of importance ever and are consistently among the worst teams in the league. Cardinals and Falcons, to me, are two teams that people kind of forget about because they're like, oh, Lions and Browns. Cardinals and Falcons are horrible most years. If Bill can go do that in Atlanta. Hats off. You I'm absolutely not. deserve it. I agree. And it, 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 because on the other hand, when when the marriage broke up, everybody was like, was it Brady? Or right. Was it Belichick? Yeah. Well, guess what? Brady proved that it was at least a large percentage him. Because what did sure. he do? He just went to another team and won a Super Bowl. So 
Well, l- let's talk about this. And, and maybe this podcast goes a little long. I don't know. But Dan Reeves and John Elway split, right? Elway goes on to win Super Bowls eventually with Shanahan. Reeves didn't just go under a rock, though. Like, Reeves took two other teams to Super Bowls. I know that we look at that and we, you know, who was it? Was it Reeves? Was it Elway? They were really good together. And I kind of look at Belichick and Brady as that because based on, hey, Tampa won it that one year. But based on last year, I could say Baker Mayfield's better than Tom Brady now. I don't know if I'm going to base that off of one year. I think they were really, really good together for a number of years. They might not have even liked each other. I don't know, but I think they were really good together, kind of like Elway and, and Reeves, even though they hated each other. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, you you gotta you gotta be able to coach to his strengths, but not restrict him as much, right? So yeah. Um, there's yeah, it was it was a good you know relationship, right? Yes, uh, yes, productive. Them, so, um, <laughs> yeah, very. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see if the other foot falls and if Belichick can do it yeah. without break. But so far, it's the answer is no. Mike, I'm going to throw one more name out there, and everyone's going to scoff and laugh, and that's fine. I don't care. Marty Schottenheimer could freaking coach, and mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody says. I know he didn't win the big one. I get it. Everywhere he went, he was good. Everywhere, Cleveland, Kansas City. Uh, he was at least halfway competitive with Washington. He went to San Diego, and they wish they could have him back. Marty Schottenheimer was good. No, he's not the best ever. I I get it. But Marty Schottenheimer was really, really good at coaching football. He was. Uh, you know, I, what, eight division titles? Yeah. Not not bad. Not I mean, bad. His, his, his Cleveland team was a, a, a drive and a fumble away from back-to-back Super Bowls. Yes, so, um. Yeah, uh, again, we we could probably keep going with another handful, you know, here yeah. and there. But yeah, yeah that, that's a great honorable mention. Marty was really, really good. Okay, Mike, we are moving on. We are going to jump into these uh, to these conference title games that are coming this weekend, and we've only got two of them, so we won't be long. But, Mike, on Sunday, we get the league championship games. We start off in the AFC. The Kansas City Chiefs go to Baltimore to face the Ravens. The Ravens opened as a three and a half point favorite. Mike, I feel like the entire world is rooting for the Ravens to eliminate the chance of a Taylor Swift Super Bowl. I think the Chiefs are going to try to keep Lamar in that pocket. Prove you can beat us down the field with your passing. I said it earlier. I wish he had a little more help from his receivers. On the other side, though, that Ravens defense, they're pretty good. They're shutting people down. It's going to be really interesting to watch against KC because the Chiefs always seem to be able to manufacture points. How is this game going to go on Sunday? Well, I, I think it's going to be a great game. I think um, it could be. You, you, and, I, and I can't believe I'm saying this. Uh, we, we alluded to it in some of the earlier uh, midseason and, and, and postseason recaps, but the Chiefs defense yeah. got them to where they are right now, yep. right? Uh, it, it, this is the best defense they've had in years, so it's really strength against strength on the defensive side, which sounds right. odd to say with this matchup, but um, you've got, you've got uh, uh, Mahomes who, who who's a wizard and can be elusive, but he's not a sprinter. They can suddenly run the ball for 40 yards. Like, uh, you know, like Lamar. Right. right. So um, I like Zay flowers. Uh, Me too. For Baltimore. Um, Always seems to be open. Yeah, yeah, I really like that kid. Uh, I don't know if he, the, he, like you said, I don't know if he has much help beyond that. Uh, but Kansas City, uh, beyond Kelsey, their receivers are not great Fair. either. So um, neither team is is loaded to the hilt offensively. But I, I, I just think it's going to be a great game. I, I think uh, two great coaches. You know, we didn't mention uh, Harbaugh and our, yeah. our NFL coaches there. Maybe he hasn't been doing it long enough, but I think he's going to be up there. Should be. Uh, we mentioned Reed. This just is is a great match. I I just cannot wait for this. And I think you're right. Outside of the 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 Baltimore area, nobody's a Ravens fan, right? Except for Sunday. Except for Sunday, <laughs> everyone is. No right? one wants to see. So so I I mean, and again, we we got to deal with this every year being in the division. But six conference championships in a row. Yeah. 
for them. I, I just we need somebody else in the Super Bowl. Okay. Baltimore's been right, and they've won one, right? But we need a change, and and we got to have somebody different. So, um, I I think it's going to be a good game. I ugh, boy, I think Baltimore's going to eke this one out. I I just at the very end. Uh, I know it goes against your pick. <laughs> well, from, from our season recap, at least. But, yes. But I yes. know you're trying to jinx them, which I'm hoping you're hoping you're doing a good job of. But I I just think. Um, you know, Kansas City did prove that they can play on the road and win on the road, but yes, I don't think did. Baltimore makes as many mistakes and plays Fair. a cleaner game than Buffalo did. Give me a score. Oh boy. Uh let's go 27-24. Oh, you literally took my score. <laughs> all right. I was just gonna flip it. I believe all the things you said. I believe Baltimore is a better team. I believe the Chiefs are a team that finds ways. Especially, especially that offense who, like you said, they have Kelsey. And they have a running back, by the way, that is really good. He runs really, really hard. And like I told you the other night, he runs like a little boy that just got new shoes. And the parents say, hey, show me how much faster your new shoes make you. And then he runs like, that's how he runs all the time. But he runs with I, a purpose. I mean, yes, he does. want you to know it. <laughs> yes, he does. But. I am going to stick with the Chiefs. I am going to go uh I'm going to go 24-20 Chiefs on the road just to annoy us and go to the Super Bowl yet again and we're going to have to hear even more about Taylor Swift and Patrick Mahomes and uh I'm just I'm done with it all. But that's going to be my pick, but Mike, I've told you before, I'm trying to jinx him and I'll be thrilled to be wrong. I couldn't be happier to be wrong. Over in the NFC, the Detroit Lions go to San Francisco to face the 49ers. The Niners have opened as a seven-point favorite. Honestly, it's funny. I think the country is cheering for the Lions, but I also think this opponent is a little different because they're tough. They're scrappy. I don't know that they have the talent to match up with the Niners. The Niners are loaded. Mike, I'm hoping it's not a blowout. The key for me, which Brock Purdy do we get? He was so bad against Green Bay. Was that a weather thing? Was that a pressure thing? I don't know. I know the weather was tough, but that scares me a little bit. How is the NFC Championship game going to go? Yeah, I, I it's 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 funny. I actually predicted this NFC Championship game, but you I did. I, I I think I had Detroit beating Dallas in the second round, but they. Yeah didn't even make it to the second round. So, right. Um, uh, as I alluded to earlier, I love the Detroit story. Uh, um, and, and like I said, with, with the other game, I think anybody outside of the Bay area is a Detroit lions fan. This yes, Sunday, right. hundred um, percent. Just loving the story. Yep. Uh, not so much anti Niners, but just loving the story of the lions. But um, I, I think you're right though. I just think the, 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 the clock strikes midnight. Um yeah. for them this year um good team they're going to be good for a while um i i don't think i don't worry about it being a blowout though i i think it's going to be close i think green bay may have exposed san francisco a little bit oh i hope so it, you know um but it, it truly does all hinge on purdy yeah. if, if, he has, if he has another bad game uh detroit's offense is more capable than what green bay put against san francisco so yeah it is they may not be able to get away with that. So um, I, I like it. I, I think San Francisco does ultimately win. I'm going to go pretty high score. I'm like 31, 31, 27. All right. All right. 31, 27. Niners come out on top. I am going to go 31 to 17. I don't have as much faith. I, I hope that the Lions keep it close. I hope the Lions hang. I hope the Lions win. I'm rooting for them. Yep. I just don't believe that it'll happen. And I think eventually – in the NFL, the horses take over. And I think San Francisco just has more elite horses than Detroit does. Like I said, I'll be rooting for the lions. That is the way that I think these picks are going to go. Mike, uh, you're going to have to come back here in a couple of weeks because we're going to have a super bowl. We're going to have to break that down. Might have to have another couple of knuckleheads join us for that and, and see in. if we can, the NFL just every year, not only is it during the season, it's the off season, it's the pre-draft, it's the post-draft, it's pre-free agency. It's it's just it's year round. It's all time. The marketing machine continues, right? Uh, I mean, 
Uh, yeah, it's and, and aren't they doing more international games next year? A game I'm in Mexico sure they or are. Like that, yes. or I think in 2026 they're planning on playing on the moon or something. Yeah, but, I think yeah, so. Yeah. Um. It 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 is what it is though. And yeah. We we gobble it up, uh, two fistedly. Oh, right? I can't wait! I can't wait every <laughs> single year. <laughs> yep. Yep. So much fun. So much yeah. fun. Yeah, it is. It, it is, and it's always fun to get together. Be sure to uh, keep that schedule clear after that Super Bowl. We're gonna have to get together again and and break down the Super Bowl and you know break down what's gonna happen next year because again the cycle never ends. We just we finish one, we start getting ready for the next one. And let me tell you, as a Bronco fan, I can't wait. To, well, actually, I can't wait till next year. I can't wait though till like 2028. That that's like that's the one yeah. I'm looking at. Yeah, right around there. Yeah, our Arch Manning in his third year as our quarterback. Perfect. We've got our guy. We finally got our guy. It's taken years, but we finally got our guy. Of course, we had to trade our first round draft pick for three centuries to get it, but you know. He's not going to fall to us either. We're going to have to trade more to get Arch, just so you know. (laughs) It can't can't happen that easy. Mike, as always, we appreciate all of your contributions to the Daily Dose. Always enjoy having you come by and, and talk NFL. Hey, we talked a little women's college hoops. We, we can talk whatever. That's the bottom line. We can talk whatever. Don't forget that I'm going to need you on call for uh, for baseball season, possibly some soccer. The Olympics, I think, are coming. So, yeah, keep, keep the phone handy is what I'm telling you. Yeah, that that, that soccer day, I'm busy that day. But, uh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> We're, we're good. All right. I got, I got Rob. I got Rob on, on quick dial on that one. So I'll have, to, I'll have to track him down. Mike, as usual, thanks for stopping by. We always enjoy your visits. Appreciate it.